Okay, so this is a time that God is like really preparing his church. He's really preparing his body for his coming. I've been hearing a lot lately, like within maybe like within the last 24 to 48 hours, um, a lot about, um, you know, uh, the groom is um, the, the groom is coming and a uh, bride, you know how God uh, is the groom and, and the church is the bride of the groom or the bride of, the bride of Christ. Um, so I, I've been hearing a lot about that. Not only that, um, uh, it was something else I wanted to share that I was, uh, um, what was, you know, being spoken to me. I can't think of it right now, but another thing is my, uh, kids in their daily devotional their they happen to be in, um, Luke chapter 12. And so I'm actually going to read that with you all and go through that. Um, so hopefully you can get the same, um, revelation and the awareness and whatever information that you need, um, out of, um, out of everything that's, that's shared. But, um, yeah, so when, um, I asked my kids, I'm like, okay, what did y'all read today? You know, let's talk about it or whatever. And as they talk to me about it, I'm like, that is crazy because that's the times that I so feel so, so strongly in my soul based on the times we're in. The Bible says that we have to watch. We have to pray, you know, as his children, as the body of believers, as the the the, uh, the bridegroom, I mean, as the, uh, the, the um, bride of Christ. We have to um, be prepared. You know, we got to be we got to be, um, you know, attentive to him um, in the t in the times and, you know, in our lives and stuff like that. So they they share with me. OK, first and foremost, I'm like, OK, what chapter y'all? They tell me they're in chapter 12 and I'm like, OK, what is chapter 12 about? So they tell me and I'm like, wow. So I'm like, I got to make a video. I got to get this out here. I got to let the the I ain't gonna say world, but I have to let the children of God know, you know, basically it's a confirmation to you, or if you didn't know, it's a, um, it's, um, you know, a revelation to you or like revealing to you. But, um, we're in the times where the groom, our groom, our Abba is coming. He is returning and he's preparing his people like never before. Let me tell you what I believe that like what phase that the body is in right now. So basically, as I told my, my children that, it's a time where God is doing the finishing touches of his, of, of, of his people. Like basically he's getting out. He's basically, um, making sure we're, we're on point. You know what I mean? He's, uh, getting rid, rid of the cranks and the, the rinks. Like he's really like doing the finishing touches and how I described to them. I gave them an example of what I was seeing as I was sharing that with them is basically like, um, in the warehouse, right? A warehouse that is pre, um, prepared, like you know, they they making products or something like that, and they're they're on the the stage where it's the finishing touches, like before the product get boxed and shipped out. I feel like strongly in my soul and in my spirit, that's the stage that we're on, as as you know, in the times and in 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 the body of Christ, like we're. God is doing the finishing touches in our life. He's making sure we work. He he's making sh he, he he's making sure that we're prepared. Like he's doing the finishing touches in our life. That's what season that we're in. Like that's the time. That's not times, but that's the season that we're in in the body in the body of believers as as the body of Christ, right? As the as the um the the um what is it? Uh the bridegroom. Um as the bride of Christ. I'm sorry. As the bride of Christ. Um, so I'm gonna read Luke chapter 12, the whole chapter. So bear with me and hear what God is saying in all of this. Like this is in this, um, context, Jesus was preparing his disciples and likewise, he's preparing, um, his body, which we are his disciples, you know? Um, so hear what God is saying. And it's some stuff that, um, as they, cause I had them to read the whole chapter, right? Cause I knew I was going to give this word. Um, in this in this chapter this is where um god would it's, it's some of the stuff he's going to be talking about um basically take no thoughts for your life on what you should eat what you should wear and you know what i thought about i remember when i first got saved a, de a decade ago that these preaching was preached to us a lot to where we was preparing in that during that time and now here it is a decade later and um you know we i don't hear people preaching this no more you know what i mean and um 
you know, we got to a place where, you know, I'm talking about the body of believers. Like, we don't, we're not really, like, taking God's word in his fullness seriously. Like, the, 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 where we are as the body, like, you know, me being aware of what, what doctrines is out there, me being aware of the people of God, me, even my own life, like, we don't live like how we once did or we don't have church you know or we we're not um excuse the lighting i'm so sorry about that the sun want to come out maybe i'll let it sh shine all right so um um it, it's not the same and so i think this is so important this word and this this luke chapter 12 um, and you know, like it's in all the, the gospels, the four, the, the four gospels, or is it five? Forgive me. I don't know how many gospel it is. Shame on me. Um, but you know, in the, in the, in the, in the gospel, right. It's, it's a number, it's a, um, a number of books, right. It's all like basically the same stuff, but it's just from different perspectives based on the, the, um, persons like, for instance, Luke based on his experience so he may not have experienced as much as matthew did with, with jesus um, um or he may have and it's just basically they're sharing their experience from their perspective so that's what the the, the gospels the chapters of the gospels um is about just to clarify that um i don't know why i felt the need to say that but um um yeah so I'm about to read the whole uh, chapter 12, Luke chapter 12, and get everything that you were meant to get out of this. You know what I mean? Um, go back and read this and meditate on this for yourself. Um, oh, this also, this is a time as the body of believers, as the 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 groom, the, the groom of Christ, right? The bride, I'm sorry. Why I keep saying groom? As the bride of Christ, right? Um this is a time to prepare like to take initiative and do just really you know prepare yourself too as well as as god is preparing you but you taking an initiative and preparing yourself shows your seriousness your dedication and it short it shows that you know you want to be firm like you know in the in this time and for when he returns so um this is a time to fast this is a time to make to incorporate fasting in your life like never before because you don't want to get lost out here you don't want to get stuck you don't want to get distracted you don't want to get you know consumed you don't want to miss um the move of god and in this god also talk about how when he comes he's going to come like a thief in the night like he's going to come when you least expect it and, he, and he's going to come and and it's going to be something that's going to be ready and, and prepared for him and it's going to be a, a lot of people that's not so this is a time to basically take initiative and 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 um uh um how would you say um be consistent each and every day don't let no day go by where you're not spending time with god you're not praying and you're not reading your word every single day you need to be sharp this is the time i'm telling y'all you don't want to be caught sleeping you don't want to be consumed you don't want to be left behind when our abba come when christ return this is the time to prepare like never before to be sharp in your relationship with god i'm hear what i'm saying hear what i'm saying all right so luke chapter 12 verse 1 i'm again i'm gonna read the whole chapter so bear with me and get the fullness of what god is saying out of this 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 um chapter and in this this message as a whole all right so luke chapter 12 verse 1 in the meantime when a in a number innumerable in the meantime when an innumerable multitude of people had gathered together so that they trumpled uh one another he began to say to his disciple first of all let me just clarify trump, trump basically it was so many people that they it was like a concert you know how um they you know people you know it was it was they was on top of each other basically he told his uh jesus told his disciples he said first of all <laughs> Beware of the leaven of the Pharisees, which is hypocrisy, for there is nothing covered that will not be revealed, nor hidden that will not be known. Therefore, whatever you have spoken in the dark will be heard in the light, and what you have spoken in the ear in inner rooms will be proclaimed on the housetops. 
So catch that. I'm going to try to briefly go through that. So basically the Bible is saying, or Jesus is saying to us and to us disciples during that time, that basically what was, uh, don't, he said, beware of the, of the, the leaven and forgive me if I'm pronouncing anything wrong. Um, uh, leaven of the Pharisees. So he said, which is hypocrisy. So he's saying this practice, this is hypocrisy. This is the Pharisees practice to, um, basically do things in secret. He's saying that everything will be covered. Uh, he said there is nothing covered that will be revealed. So he's saying that, um, that there's no, no secrets, you know what I mean? In this, in this, in this practice, there's, it won't, it will be revealed. You know what I mean? Um, so that's what Jesus is saying to us. Verse four and the title of this, 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 um, next section, it says, Jesus teaches the fear of God. All right. I think that's important. Verse four. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who killed the body. Ooh, I got so much to say about this part. And after that, have no more that they could do again. I'm gonna read it again. Verse four. And I say to you, my friends, my body, hallelujah, the, 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 um, what happened? Um, he said, the lady, she only scheduled for one of us. She said, but he said that one of us can go, both of us could go at the same time. And then, um, after the schedule is done, somebody else can go after we're done. With our okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Watch out for the cars. Go ahead. But tell them if, if, if possible, all of y'all to go at the same time. Yeah, we can. See if possible. Okay. All right. Um, I'm sorry about that, y'all. Verse four. And I say to you, my friends, do not be afraid of those who kill the body and after that have no more that they can do. But I will show you whom you shall fear. Fear him who, after he killed, has the... Hold on, let me rewind that back. Verse five. But I will show you whom you sh shall fear. Fear him who, after he has killed, has the power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him. Talking about God. Basically, okay, let me address verse four. All right. The Bible is saying, or Jesus is saying to us, excuse the lighting, the lighting. Oh my gosh. <laughs> that was funny how I said that. Oh my gosh. Um, Verse four. Goodness gracious. Verse four. Um, the sun is going down. So sorry. I'm in my car. Um, Jesus is telling us not to fear of, you know, those who, let me say how it said, do not, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. And after that, no more that they can do. Jesus is saying, you know, they, they may kill the body, you know, they may have authority to kill the body, but that's all they can do. They can't break your spirit. They can't break your soul. They can't, you know, that the, the body is temporal. It's nothing but a shell. That's not who we are. That's why we should not put a lot we should not invest a lot into our body. Like we shouldn't even be investing anything in, in our body, like getting inject injections, getting um, surgical, all of this stuff, unless like, you know, you need to, it's necessary and you pray. I mean, that's a whole nother thing, but just to get it, just to get it, it's not the will of God. You know what I mean? We putting too much on the exterior and not the in interior or I have my in internal, like, um, I don't know the other word, but we're putting too much on the outside. You get what I'm saying? That is not the will of God. You know, the only thing that we should be doing is take, taking care of our body. That's it. We shouldn't be overly or even doing anything above that besides taking care of our body. That's, that's, you know what I mean? And working out every day and just trying to be, what are we trying to be a bodybuilder? Like just doing overly invested in our bodies. That's not the will of God. That's a distraction. Because it's temporal. Why would you invest so much in something that's temporary? Rather focus and invest on the thing that's internal, inwardly, lasting stuff. That's mature. That's wise. That's the will of God. All right. Um, but uh, what I want to say about that too, additionally, verse four 
I feel that it's coming a time like that's that's what we're headed to where we're about to start getting per per persecuted for our love for, for Christ Christ where it's a distinction between who's of God and who's not and it's finna come a time it's so crazy that we're talking about this too is because I was um, in the bathroom earlier today and a random thought happened. I don't know. It just was in line, right? Um, this is before all of this because my kids reading of the scriptures and all that, that was just a little bit ago. And um, what I was going to say, um, so a thought came to me and while I was in the restroom, I was standing there, I don't know what I was, just getting ready, I guess. And I just had a moment. It was like a I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but you know, um, I got, I guess an inclination or I don't know, but I just thought of John being beheaded and I haven't read about him being, but it's been a few weeks or a couple of weeks. So it wasn't fresh on my mind or nothing. It was just something that was brought to me. And I started thinking about it and I was like, dang, like it's coming. Like that's coming where we were, we're about to start. Like the heat is going to be on us that believe like, you know, and so we definitely have to, we must be prepared, you know, and we got to get to the point where it's all or nothing. Like we ready, and you know, if that was to happen and God is saying, Jesus is saying, if that happened, don't fear, don't fear what people can do to your body. That's all they can do. That's what the scriptures say. First chapter, Luke chapter 12, verse four. Let me read it again. And I say to you, my friend, do not be afraid of those who kill the body. And after that, have no more that they can do. Jesus is saying. But I, I'm sorry, but I will. Okay. Yeah. But I will show you whom you show, who you, whom you shall fear, fear him who after he has killed has the power to cast into hell. Yes, I say to you, fear him, exclamation mark. Fear God. Don't fear nothing else that don't, that have a limited authority, that can do limited things, but fear the one who all things is possible with, basically. Verse six, um, are not five sparrows sold for two? Uh, carper, carp, carpal coins wait are not five sparrows sold for two carpal coins question mark and not one of them is forgotten before god but but the very hairs of your head are numbered do not fear therefore you are of more value than many uh sparrows sparrows yes verse eight the title of this next section is confess christ before men this is very important, y'all. Go back and read this, meditate on this, the growth, go developing this, like growing this, like you know, just this chapter alone. I'm telling you, you you're gonna need it for where we headed. This is this is where we at. This is where we're at. Period. Like, all right. Confess Christ before men. Verse eight. Also, I say to you, whoever confessed me before men, him the Son of Man also will confess before the angels of God. But he who denies me before man will be denied before the angels of God. This is also in Revelations. Um, I believe it's in Revelations, but it's basically talking about um, um, uh, Jesus. Um, I read this somewhere else. Basically, it's talking about judgment. Like, you know, if you lived a life where you did that, you didn't confess God. If you was um, ashamed to confess God, then um, likewise, the son of man would do during judgment. You know, he would deny you before the angels um, of God. Verse 10. And anyone who speaks a word against the son of man, it will be forgiven him. Catch this, y'all. Hear this. But to whom who, who who blasphemy against the Holy Spirit, it will not be forgiven. This will not be forgiven. So if you speak a word against the son of man, okay, that can be forgiven. But God, but Jesus is saying blasphemy against the Holy, Holy Spirit, Holy Ghost will not be forgiven. Verse 11, now when they bring you to the Sinons and the magistrate and authorities, do not worry. God is preparing us, y'all. He is preparing us, my God, 
um do it okay i'm gonna read it again verse 11 now when the when they bring you to the signals and the magistrates and the authorities meaning the courts and and you know in, in in front of the officials and the authorities and you know these legal people the a government basically um do not worry about how you know what i thought about people in jail people that's that's really um brought in these courts and stuff it says do not worry about how or what you should answer or what you should say for the holy spirit holy ghost will teach you in that very hour what you ought to say now if you got people loved ones that's going through a legal battle they're in court give them this this uh chapter luke chapter uh 12 to study to meditate to pray on to fast in give them this this will help them this will help them of course jesus alone but this is instructions this is this is food for our soul this is our god our manual you know our everyday manual amen uh the next section um title is the parable of the rich fool verse 13 then one from the crowd said to him teacher tell my brother to divide the inheritance with me but he said to to him jesus said to him man who made me a judge or a uh arbiter a baiter a arbitrator over you and he said to them take heed and and beware of covet covetousness for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses now let me elaborate right there so in other words jesus is saying to you to, to to those that um you know are dealing with he's addressing a lot in this chapter um to those who are dealing with wills and um you know like when people die the inheritages and stuff like the worldly inheritance not kingdom inheritance the the worldly inheritance and stuff like that god is saying that he's like take heed and beware of the covetousness he called that covetousness if i'm pronouncing it right um this is in verse 15 for one's life does not consist in the abundance of the things he possesses so that's another thing like chill out with you know you know even people of god prosperity and all of that don't get this is a time where god is humbling his 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 body he's humbling the church with his one church he's humbling the 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 groom uh the bride goodness gracious um i haven't been to many weddings so i'm not really you know um yeah so the 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 bride he's humbling his his bride and you know his bride is not to be cons be um uh consumed or or you know our the the life of us does not consist of the abundance of the things we possesses like the things that we should boast in and that we should value again is internal nothing nothing tangible nothing that we can touch nothing that is physical amen verse 16 then he spoke a parable to them saying the ground of a certain man um, i'm sorry um then he spoke a parable to them saying the ground of a certain rich man yielded plentifully and he thought within himself saying what shall i do since i have no room to store my crops question mark so he said i will do this i will put down my barns and build greater and there i will store all my crops and my goods and i and i will say to my soul so you have many goods laid up for for many years take your ease meaning rest eat drink and be married all right that's how the world system is like you know how they tell us to retire work hard go hard get the best jobs go to school all of that and then retire and then ease drink you know basically you know you know no but look what god said but god would say to him fool exclamation mark this night your soul will be required of you basically this 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 is your last night um then whose will those things be which you have provided then 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 what well all, all the work that you um you 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 did to have possessions and you stored up you went hard for you basically um you know you basically that's what you lived for now now what you 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 you're gonna die tonight now what what was the point 
you live the perp you you live the perp purposeless life amen verse 21 so he who uh verse 21 so is he who lay i'm so sorry so he so is he who lays up treasures or treasure for himself and is not rich towards god so he so is he who lays up treasure for himself and is not rich towards god basically what i said don't wear do not worry that's the title for this next uh ses session or um yeah then he said to his disciples therefore i say to you do not worry about your life what you will eat nor what the nor about the body what you will put on life is more um than food and the body is more than clothing consider the ravens for they neither sow nor nor reap uh which have neither storehouse nor nor barn and god feeds them catch that y'all this is very important for the times that is coming up because we're come it's it's getting we're approaching the times where we can't either buy sell trade and all of that and god is really preparing us for that to where we won't receive the mark of the beast and you have to be prepared or you will receive it um and so god is saying like don't focus on that now and another thing this holy ghost lord don't let me lose my spot verse 25 um, another thing, um, many of you all are in transition to where it's a lot of stuff has transitioned in your life, including mine. It's like in this month alone, so much stuff has transitioned, transpired and transitioned in my life to where I have to completely trust God a lot in my life. And it's not even, I don't even feel like how I once felt when I had to trust him in the test before I feel like God is just doing the finishing touches. Right. But going back to y'all many of y'all got um things have transpired and transitioned in your life to where you got to trust god um god is just simply really preparing you to where you'll be prepared for what's coming you get what i'm saying and so really take this um preparation in the right perspective take it in in the right way you get what i'm saying so that you can completely be prepared for what's coming because that's all that what, what he's really doing you get him sense just to make you it's to prepare you to make you strong and to de develop you wholly like so you can be complete without lacking nothing you know how the bible says um in james let patience have his way so that you can be complete and lacking nothing that's basically is what's happening in this time okay um so um let's see i'm gonna read verse 24 again consider the raven rave ravens for they neither sow, sow nor reap, reap goodness, um, which have neither storehouse nor barn, and God feeds them. Of how much more value are you than the birds? Question mark. And which of you, by wearing, can add one um, cubit to its stature? Question mark. If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Question mark. I'm going to read that again. That's significant. Ask yourself. Verse 26. If you then are not able to do the least, why are you anxious for the rest? Question mark. Consider the lilies. He going in. He's giving us multiple examples so that we can understand and rest in him amen consider the lilies how they grow they neither toil nor spin and yet i say to you even solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these if then god so clothed cl clothes the grass which today is in the field and tomorrow is thrown into the oven how much more how much more um will he clock you oh you of little faith question mark and do not seek what you shall eat or what you shall drink nor have an anxious mind for all these things the nation of the world seek after and your father knows that you have need these things but seek the kingdom of god and all these things shall be added unto you how many times have we heard this but we have to take heed to this like never before and be consistent in this and be firm and rooted and just 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 rested anchored in this this chapter and in these instructions that God gives us. 
in these last finishing touches that he's doing with his body. Amen. I'm going to read verse 29 again. And do not seek what you shall eat or what you shall drink, nor have an anxious mind for all these things the nation of the world seek after this is the worldly things the world does this not the body of believers we should not be doing this and your father knows that you you need these things but seek the kingdom of god and all these things shall be added unto you seek him do not fear little flock for it is yours uh verse 32 i'm sorry do not fear little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom sell what you have and give alms alms provide yourself money bags which do not grow old a treasure in the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches nor moth destroys for where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. I'm going to read it once more, 32. Do not fear, little flock, for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Sell what you have and give alms. 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 Um, provide yourself money bags which do not grow old. This is what he's saying. Provide yourself money bags. He said, a treasure in the heavens that does not fail where no thief approaches nor moth destroys for where your treasure is there your heart will be also this is it y'all this this title is is uh the faithful servant and the evil servant let your waist be girded armor right let your waist be girded hear this uh um bride of christ and your lambs burning this is it and you yourself be like men who wait for their master it's getting hot <laughs> um when he will return from the wedding that when he comes and knocks, they may open to him. I'm going to read that again. Verse uh, 35, Luke chapter 12, verse 35. Let your waist be girded and your lamps burning, your lamps burning. And you yourself be like men who waits for their master when he will return from the wedding that when he comes and knocks that I mean, I'm sorry. They may open to him immediately. Catch this, y'all. Blessed are those servants whom the master, when he comes, will find watching. Assuredly, I say to you that he will gird himself and have them sit down to eat and will come and serve them. And if he should come in the second watch or come in the third watch and find them so, blessed are those servants. But know this, that if the master of the house had known what hour the thief would come, he would have watched and not allow his house to be broken into. Therefore, you also be ready for the, for the son of man is coming at an hour you do not expect therefore you i'm reading again verse 40 therefore you also be ready for the son of man is coming at an, an uh at an hour you do not expect then peter said to him lord do you speak this parable only to us or to the people question mark and the lord said uh who then is that faithful and wise steward whom his master will make ruler over his household to give them their portion of food in due season, question mark. Blessed is that servant whom his master will find so doing when he comes. Truly, I say to you that he will make him ruler over all that he has. But if that servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and being to beat, I'm sorry, 
But if the servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begin to beat, beat the male and female servant and to eat and drink and be drunk. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna read that again, but let me say this first. So basically a lot of us do this, you know, the promises that God gave us um, in this sense is bigger than that. It's, it's about um, our groom and, and, and Christ returning. Um, but you can take it both because it's still some promises that God is going to be given to us, you know, and or we could um, forfeit or delay those promises. Um, but more so it's about God, God's our Christ returning. So we get like this all the time. And God is saying, don't don't Jesus is saying, don't be caught like this when Christ returns. You can you can get like that of the promises of God, but don't be like that when Christ returns. Trust me, like he's saying, no, don't be like that. So um, you might think like, oh, you know, this is not important. This is very important because our flesh is like this. We can get like this. If we're not consistent, if we're not rooted, if we don't take the things of God seriously daily, we will be like this. Uh, verse 45, but if the servant says in his heart, my master is delaying his coming and begins to beat the male and female servants and to eat and drink and be drunk um, the master of that servant will come on a day when he is not looking for him and at that and at an hour when he is not aware and will cut him into in in two. Oh, he will cut him in two, the number two and appoint him his portion with the unbelievers. Basically, he's going to um, he's going to have repercussions and then the master will basically put them put them out cast them out with the unbelievers and that servant who knew his master will and okay i'm sorry verse 47 and that servant who knew his master's will okay like his plans and did not prepare himself or do according to his will will i mean shall be beaten with many stripes but he who did not know yet committed Things deserving of stripes shall be beaten with few. Mm, that's when the Bible says, uh, it's better to know God to, than to it's better to not know God than to know him and then to act like you didn't know him or something like that. Um, for everybody to whom much is given, for him much will be required, and to whom much has been committed of him they will ask the more. I'm going to read that again. For everyone to whom much is given, um, from him much will be required. And to whom much has been committed of him, they they will ask the more. Amen. All right. Come on. I'm ready for this to end. I'm sorry, y'all got stuff going on. Um, We're at the end, y'all. Uh, Where we at? Okay, the next the next session we only got like two more three more sections. Christ uh, brings division. This is important. Verse thirty nine. I came to send fire on the earth, and ha and how and how I wish it was already kindled. Exclamation mark. Jesus is saying, I came to send fire on the earth, and how I wish it was already kindled. Exclamation mark. But I have a baptism uh, to be baptized with. And how distressed I am till it is accomplished! Exclamation mark. Do you su su suppose? Do you suppose that I come to give peace on earth? Question mark. I tell you, not at all, but rather division. For from now on, five. For from now on, five in one house will be be divided. This is this is. Uh, we already people are already experiencing this this is this is what it is um three against two and two against three father will be divided against son and son against father mother against daughter and daughter against mother mother-in-law against daughter-in-law and daughter-in-law against mother-in-law the next session uh title is discern the time then he said also then he also said to the multitudes whenever you see a cloud raising out of the west immediately you say a shower is coming like the news right 
and so it is and when you see the south wind blows or when you see the south wind blow you say there will be hot weather and there it is hypocrites hypocrisies hypocrisy hypocrites exclamation mark you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth but how is it you do not discern this time question mark next title make peace with your adversary uh verse 57 yes and why even of yourselves do you not judge what is right question mark when you go with your adversary to the magistrate make every effort along the way to settle with him lest he drag you to the judge the judge deliver you to the officer and the officer throw you into prison let me read that again yes and why even of yourselves do you not judge what is right question mark when you go with your adversary to the magistrate by courts um, make every effort along the way to settle with him lest he drag you to the judge the judge deliver you to the officer and the officer throw you into prison verse 59 i tell you you shall not depart from there till you have paid the very last might and that's it that's that's the whole reading of the chapter 12 in luke oh excuse me lord have mercy excuse me why I, I can't stand when i get up on here and start burping and stuff i did have something to drink but nothing like that to where i'm burping like i just ate i haven't even ate nothing because i'm fasting so um before i was gonna before i say what i'm gonna i was gonna say i'm gonna say this because I, I just said fasting so maybe that's why i burped i don't know um so fasting so i'm fasting with um pastor prophet lobi right um on his community page on youtube um he gave the instructions on the community uh the community part the section of the community um each channel that you follow they have live you can see um like their live videos you can see their uploaded videos you can see anything they posted on a community sex session and so um although i'm gonna share this on facebook i'm not as you can see i'm not on facebook like that i'm gonna share this on facebook and youtube I'm not on Facebook like that. And just like on Facebook, the community page, like your news feeds and stuff, that's the community page on YouTube. That's It's the same thing on YouTube. So I, that's where I do all my, my so if you, if God is leading you to, um, you know, to be under this type of teaching and under me, that's where I give all my instructions. That's where I post like um, um, often on there. I post a lot on, on there and I upload, of course, the videos on, on YouTube. Um, all my postings will be for sure on YouTube. I don't I don't post all my postings or my videos on Facebook. I do if I feel the need, but I, I'm losing I don't really like Facebook like I used to. I you know, um so if if God is leading you to me, if you if you if you get blessed by me and you're you will be following me in the future, you know, um, you know, um I don't wanna say following, but you know, if I'm if you're a disciple of me. If I'm discipling you in you in any way, you're my disciple. I'm on YouTube. You can catch me on YouTube and 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 um uh all my uh stuff will be on there and and and, and the community part is important because sometimes I'll say something on there that I didn't say in the video. So you can find me on YouTube, right? So um on Pastor Lovey community page he posts the the fasting instructions so I, th I believe it's for 19 days that he have us to fast and so he told us on sunday um uh i'm one of his disciples you i guess you can say because um i would say more m mentor not necessarily a disciple maybe both or whatever but i do follow his teachings and he do god use him a lot in my life you get what i'm saying but at the same time I'm a person that teaches well. So, you know, um, but on Sunday, he told us, um, cause I saw him in person on Sunday that, uh, you know, this is a time that we need to pray and fast. Right. And he didn't really talk about why it was, but I see why now, you know, what I'm telling you guys. Um, so actually he started Tuesday, but I started today cause I didn't realize it was this week. So I shared it on my community page on YouTube to uh, start this. I thought it was going to be for, for the new year, like the new year fasting. And it wasn't. It was like, you know, this week. 
So I started today. And so my instructions is a little bit different um, than his instructions because God gave me something different and I posted it on a community page. So this is a time that you want to fast, that you want to pray, that you want to cling to God and the things of God like never, ever, ever before. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, I'm telling you. Um, and what I was going to say about, you know, after I got finished reading the um, chapter, um, chapter 12 in Luke um, is if you have not discerned, um, I'm not going to address that. If you, if you discerning the times, oh, and this is another thing. Thank you, Holy Ghost. It's about discerning the times. It's about what I'm saying. It's not off topic. This is actually to help what I'm about to say. All right. Um, so, um, I just got back into town a few days ago, right? It was Monday to be exact. My Uber driver that drove me home from my airport um, said to me, you know, um, when he was putting my bags, you know, in the trunk or whatever, he said to me, he was like, um, uh, was that, I don't know when he said it to me. I think it was in when he was putting my bags in the trunk or is when we was in the car. He said to me, he was like, um, you know, you brought, he said, you brought the rain. That's what he told me. He said, you brought the rain. He was being facetious. And I didn't think nothing of it. I knew he was being facetious or whatever, whatever. Then the next day, I went out to the store, me and my daughter, and I met another man. And um, he said, because um, I told him where I was from, from or whatever. He was like, where are you from? He was like, because he, he, he was like an accent. He noticed my accent. And I'm like, I don't have an accent. Y'all got the accent out here. I'm like, I, my, if I do have an accent, no, I said, where, where I'm from, we don't have an accent. But... The way that I talk, I do talk with, like, it's, it's kind of strange. Like, I got a weird, like, way of talking. I know that. I accept that about myself. It is what it is. I was like, but where I'm from, we don't have an accent. Like, California, we're, 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 we don't have an accent. Y'all have the accent here. Southern people have an accent. And um, so I was telling them, I'm like, why I look like this out here? Because I'm not used to how it look out here. But at the same time, I've been out here for a year and a little over a year. So I was out here last year for for the winter and fall or whatever i was out here last year during this season and, it, and i didn't experience this so here it is it was around like i don't know it probably was in between 6 and 8 p.m it wasn't that late in the day and um it was real foggy and like it looked like the top of the morning like you know like a four o'clock in the morning how you know, you in the mountains, you high, you're elevated, and it's the fog. It was like that. And I'm like, why is it looking like that? Like, it's looking, I don't know. I was just like, this is just strange, right? So I said all that to say is that for you who are discerning the times, even if you're not discerning the times, discern the times. Get with God if your discernment is not there. The times is being discerned and the, the discerning of times is we're we're so in the end times it's not even funny it's so much the prophecies are being revealed like before us and i will be coming on here soon talking about what seal we're in because it, it's being revealed what seal we're in um and i'm not going to talk about that but we are in the last of the time the last of the times the last of the last of the last of the times and this is the time to do away with any games. Matter of fact, if you're still playing games, this message is not for you. This message is not for you. This is for those who are prepared or God is preparing you. This is for those who God is preparing because God is still preparing us. And he's in, this is the stage that he's doing the finishing touches. That's the, the name of this message the finishing touching like this is what God is doing he's he's doing it and so just be aware of what God is doing that's the whole purpose of this video and for you to what to focus on focus on Luke chapter 12 because that's what that's what realm we're in that's what season we're in that's what place we're in as a whole amen so that's all I had I, 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 I had to say that's what I came on here to say um, forgive me if um, I didn't deliver this message in the matter that I wanted to with so many, not so many, but so many things that I know that um, I didn't want in this video, but I got out the, the word and that's all that matters. You know what I mean? And if you hear me talking funny, I recently got a tooth pull and it still haven't completely healed. 
and I feel like it's like a big gap to where I feel a snag a tooth in this area and it's where my tongue hits and it, uh, I don't like the way I talk now and the way I, my mouth feel it feel strange so that's what's going on but you guys be blessed um continue to watch and pray you know what I mean and 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 um, meditate on this chapter because it's, it's very significant in this in this time amen